Hey guys, today we're talking about South Korean made red dot sites, which of course would exist because South Korea is a manufacturing powerhouse and they have a very large military that they have to equip. South Korean made optics do get exported into the American and European market. However, nobody really buys them, at least in this country. And that's probably because they don't fall into the price to performance category that you expect. I think we all tend to assume that Japanese and South Korean made electronics should be better than Chinese ones, although that's probably a very antiquated notion, not just in terms of firearms accessories, but kind of in general. I mean, the most high-tech, advanced, and high-quality electronics in the world are pretty much top-tier flagship cell phones, almost all of which are made in China, because that's where Foxconn is. Whatever. Some of us still remember a time when it seemed like Japan was the last word in electronics. And that time was the 90s. That's why watching the original Blade Runner is such a trip. Is Sony even still in business? I have no way of finding out. Today, we're going to be taking a look at two South Korean-made red dots. The one on the left is the Actis Core 1, although it's also rebranded and sold by Kalashnikov USA, which is kind of weird. And the one on the right is a South Korean military issue red dot. This one is known as the T3N, although there are other very similar versions that go by a bunch of different names. Let's get into it. This video was made possible by supporters of the channel on Subscribestar. Check out the links in the video description for ways to support the show, and thank you for watching. The big name in South Korean red dot sites is a company called DI Optical. You might remember them from a video I did about one of their IR laser modules a while back. It was very expensive, but not that impressive in terms of performance. Something I can't believe I forgot to mention in that video is that the real name of this company is Dong-In Optical. They only go by DI Optical in the United States because Dong-In Optical is just a terrible name to have when you're operating in the United States. The Actus Core 1 is produced by a different South Korean company, and as far as I'm aware, both of these optics have been issued to the South Korean military, at least in similar variants. The DI Optical T3N is largely an Aimpoint Comp M4 clone, kind of. It has a CR123 battery and a power adjustment knob. It does include night vision settings, pretty standard stuff. There have been a bunch of versions of this. The ones that you most commonly see, I believe, are the RV1 and the RV2, which are controlled with buttons rather than the knob, but they're still basically the same sight. The Actus Core 1 is more of an Aimpoint Comp M5 clone. It's powered by a single AAA battery in a low-slung, off-to-the-side battery compartment. Again, it's got a brightness adjustment knob. It also looks like it uses the same Aimpoint Micro standard mount interface, so you could attach this to any other mount if you wanted to. Just in terms of performance and build quality, these optics both seem pretty much fine. They're essentially hollow sun tier in terms of performance and overall quality. Overall, I think they're actually a little less impressive than Hollow Sun's because Hollow Sun's product is very mature at this point. They've been through a lot of iterations, they sell a ton of units, and they've got some pretty high end designs. These both perform kind of like old generation Hollow Sun's, not on the level of new stuff like the EPS or the Ames or anything like that. DI Optical as a company is much more interesting to talk about, so let's just sort of get these optics out of the way pretty fast. The Core 1 works fine. It's got night vision performance similar to an older Hollow Sun, like a 515, not nearly on the level of an Aimpoint or any of the new SIGs. Definitely not as good as some of the newer Hollow Sun stuff like the Ames, the 509, and the EPS. Light transmission is not amazing, and the brightness settings are spaced reasonably well, kind of like that, again, that older generation of high-end hollow sun, like the 515. The newer high-end hollow sun stuff is way better and also more expensive than this, and then the really cheap hollow sun stuff is still worse than this, but yeah, the Actis just kind of falls into an awkward middle ground where it doesn't really justify its place in the market, and the prices are a little too high to really make this a compelling purchase. Kalashnikov USA is selling their version of the Core 1 for a little bit under 300 bucks right now, and that's just too close to a whole better tier of optics available from SIG and Holosun, so it doesn't make a lot of sense to go with the Core 1. As users can adjust brightness of dot rectangle in reference to surrounding conditions and take aim with night vision goggles on, they can enjoy the same performance at night as in daytime. My primary concern with the Core 1 is the durability of the mount and the durability of the brightness knob. The mount looks a little bit spindly, kind of like a Vortex or a SIG MSR, and the brightness control knob feels like it's just not going to take a lot of abuse before it gets really loose or pops off entirely. 
The DI Optical T3N feels like a fairly rugged, decently well-made red dot, but it also feels pretty antiquated. If you look at some of the more common DI Optical export models like the RV1 and the RV2, those look like a pretty substantial improvement, and certainly they're easier to buy because they're actually export models. So if you really want a South Korean red dot, because maybe you got your hands on a Daewoo and you want to keep it relatively clone correct, I see no reason not to go with something like the RV2. It has push button controls and it also has a dedicated night vision button, which is just a fun feature to have on any optic. Usually when I see DI optical referred to online, it's people speculating about the performance of their so-called holographic sights. They have a couple of optics like the DCL30, I think, or maybe the EG1 as it's known in the export market. These are big rectangular window red dots that I think a lot of people mistake for being holographic because the windows are square, I guess. Well, I can tell you they're definitely not holographic. They are red dots, and DI Optical describes them as prismatic red dots, which doesn't mean that they're prism optics either. There are a couple of ways to project a red dot onto a window. Almost every red dot optic on the market right now is of the same essential design. So there's an emitter at the back of the optic housing. It shines forward, bounces off of the front lens and into your eyeball. But there is another way to do it where the emitter is on the bottom and uses like a prismatic lens below the optic. And that's something that we actually see in some optics made by Meprolite. I think it's the Meprolite TrueVision RDS, which actually has that same design. And those have a big rectangular window and they kind of look like a holographic, but they're still just a regular red dot sight. I don't know for sure if the DI Optical EG1 and the other boxy prismatic red dots that they sell would perform the same. I suspect they probably would. Those are essentially unobtainable in the United States. Maybe they're more available in Europe, or maybe DI Optical is still spinning up production on them and they'll be available in the future. I'm not totally sure. I keep seeing suggestions online that Blackwater is going to start importing and selling DI Optical made red dot sites. Yes, that Blackwater formerly known as Z, formerly known as Blackwater. I'm not in a huge hurry to take a look at one of those because they're not holographic, and that would be about the only thing that could potentially be interesting about those optics. I guess that's basically all you need to know. There is no reason for you to buy a red dot from South Korea. I think there's a hidden desire in a lot of gun owners to buy some sort of mid-tier optic. Like, they don't want to go as cheap as getting a Chinese-made red dot, but they also don't want to shell out for an American or Swedish-made red dot, so they want something that kind of hits in the middle of that price category. If that's what you're looking for, South Korea cannot help you, but thankfully there are red dots from SIG, like the Romeo 4T Pro and 4XT Pro, I guess as well as the 8T, which are made in the United States, use some components sourced from Asian companies like Japan, and end up being cheaper than aim points, despite technically outperforming them by quite a lot. More options and more competition is never a bad thing, but as I think I've already made it clear, nothing that DI Optical produces is actually competitive on the American market. It is designed with open type lens to allow users to cover more extensive area around target while aiming and respond to abruptly appearing targets instantly. Thank you for watching. If you like this channel, you guys can support me in one of various ways. Actually, more than one way, if you really want to. The easiest way is to subscribe to the channel and do all of the unpalatable things that YouTubers like to talk about. You know, liking, commenting, sharing the video. Of course, I would never ask you to do that stuff, but if you want to do those things, I'm not going to hold you back. You can also support me directly via Subscribestar. There is a link in the video description. If you do that, you get access to early videos, a lot of bonus videos that never make it to the main channel. You also get to watch the archived live show and podcast stuff that I do with BrassFax. There is also a Linktree link in the video description that has various affiliate and sponsorship links. I will see you guys in the next video.